We are often told, in those moments where life seems to let us down, that we need to temper our expectations. That we must make them more realistic, more grounded, or we should simply expect far less in life. But what is it that causes us to set expectations that are so far off from what life throws at us? 20th century French philosopher Simone de Beauvoir would say that it is the stories we tell ourselves. These stories which dictate not only our role in society, but what is appropriate in our day-to-day -day living, our desires, interests, and, most substantially, our plan for our future is dictated by this narrative. Have you ever felt as though everyone else has a better grasp on life than you do? Has it ever seemed as if, no matter what aspirations and goals you set for yourself, no matter what beliefs you so fervently adhere to, you still feel the same frustrations? Does it feel as though every new plan, every fresh start, always lands you in the same psychological and emotional state? If you have turned to the internet for help with this, you will have found no shortage of videos which say that it is your unnecessarily high or misguided expectations which have caused you this anguish. And while in each individual case this certainly holds some truth, what is it that has brought these expectations about in the first place? When and why did we set these expectations upon ourselves that we seem to understand so little about? It is your story, or more accurately put, the story that you have observed and incorporated as your own. The story which, when presented to you, gives all the signs of a happy and fulfilled life. An aesthetic which symbolically represents things like joy, excitement, purpose, and carefree living without providing the full picture. It is from this narrative that our expectations come from, and as this is the story of someone else's life, it can never truly make us happy. Perhaps you observed a famous musician, writer, war hero, politician, or any manner of examples, and have chosen to emulate them based on what you perceived as the resulting happiness, purpose, or meaning from such a life. Your toxic family may have told you that to abandon them would be evil. Your social influences may have informed you of how a man or a woman should behave, and that to stray from these rules was morally wrong. Without invitation, these stories begin to take root in your mind, and begin to twist your moral compunction. Perhaps when you were very young, you observed someone on social media traveling around, always smiling, always adventuring, and seemingly free from the mental and physical tethers which weigh you down. You decide that if such a life is good, you want to live that life. In essence, you have followed an external idea to tell you what is good and bad, robbing yourself of the capacity to see your life clearly. And so you set about to live such a life, judging yourself along the way based on how your life stacks up to the story. If you have consumed a narrative that to depict a strong and manly composure is good, and that to appear emotionally vulnerable is bad, you will unfairly judge yourself when you experience these very human emotions. By allowing the story to tell you good and bad, you pass judgment on yourself without even consulting yourself. You may try to suppress these emotions or cover them up with anger, shows of strength, or any manner of half measures. Yet this expectation that you should always feel the same way and never be affected emotionally by the pains of life is to deny the very fact that you are human. In effect, you allow a phantom to haunt you, one that only exists if you allow it to exist. Social media can have a particularly confusing effect on us here as well as it presents us with a one-dimensional view of life that our minds cannot help but compare ourselves to. The irony here is that we are comparing the very aspects of our lives which are not depicted in what is presented to us anyway. In other words, we compare the transitory and comparatively dull parts of everyday life to the montage of finer points the individual is portraying to us. What we fail to realize is that our physical circumstances do not bring us happiness or fulfillment. In essence, we allow this abstract aesthetic that is this adopted story to inform us of what is good in life, and therefore we judge things in our lives as such. For instance, if you believe that traveling is the key to a happy life because of someone else's life that you observe from a distance, you will see a lack of travel in your own life as bad. If you cannot afford to travel or your circumstances restrict you from doing so, you judge yourself as a failure for not living this good life. The irony all along being that we have no true insight as to whether this life will actually bring us what we need or want. Such commitment to an outside narrative can push us to make life decisions such as ending a relationship, moving, and turning down opportunities because we know that this way to live is what we must do to be happy. But is it? You see, it is not so much that we need to adjust our expectations for each individual moment as it comes, but more so that we need to take a closer look at the stories we're telling ourselves and ask the question, is this really for me? We must seriously ask ourselves to what degree are we going to allow ideas floating about in the world to inform us of who we are meant to be? 
we may find that some of these stories have lingered with us from a time when we were very different. We may find that what we thought living out these narratives would give us was actually just a ploy to draw us into something larger. Perhaps we may even discover what it truly means to live our own story. As you begin to let go of these adopted narratives, you will see your confusing expectations vanish as if they never existed at all. You will see the power that these abstract stories held over you and wonder how you let something so small cause you so much frustration and pain. For to be happy and free is not to be informed of who you are and live in service of this, but to inform the world of who you are without inhibitions. Let go of these stories pushed on you and you will be free to live out your real story in real time, free of the shame and anxiety you impose on yourself by letting the world keep your true self locked inside.